Hey guys, it's Sarah and today's video is going to be a get ready with me. I've got a bunch of products I want to use today and I especially wanted to use my Billy Beauty Eyes of India palette in a video this month because this is my one month one palette for October. So I definitely wanted to make sure that I used that on camera at least once. So I've got these. These are the e.l.f. like charcoal under eye masks and they feel really nice and cooling. I also had them in my refrigerator, <laughs> so they're especially cooling, but even not coming out of the fridge, they're still very cooling. So they have been on, I think, for about 10 or 15 minutes now, so I'm gonna go ahead and take them off. But ooh, whew, I feel refreshed. So I feel like we have lots to chat about today. I did ask you guys yesterday on my Instagram stories if you had any topics or questions for a chatty get ready with me that you wanted me to talk about. So I'll kind of go off of that today, but this is my SPF. This is just the Versed Guards Up SPF 35 that I've been working through. I really like this. It just blends in so quickly and it doesn't even really feel like sunscreen. And even though it's tinted, it's not one of the like really matte tinted mineral sunscreens, kind of like the Bear Republic one or the Paula's Choice one. It still feels a little bit hydrating. I'm not usually a fan of tinted mineral sunscreens, so. First order of business though, before I get into the questions. So I have decided, I'm pretty certain that I'm gonna be doing Vlogmas this year. Never done it before. Vlogmas obviously is kind of based on vlogging throughout like the holiday season. Typically what people do, there's a lot of different ways that people do it, but it usually starts on December 1st, which is actually my birthday, <laughs> and um, goes until either the end of December or until Christmas. And a lot of people will do like a vlog every single day. I do not have the capacity to do that, but I think what I'll do is maybe one to two bonus vlogs each week. So you'll still be getting my three to four normal beauty videos each week, but then there will be one or two additional videos kind of sprinkled in there. And it'll probably just be clips that I film throughout the week and then kind of put them all together into a vlog. So I'm really excited. Um, what I want to try to do is make sure that the vlogs are still appealing <laughs> to my normal audience. Like I know there's like the true blue fans who will watch anything that I upload and I love you guys so much. I want to try to sprinkle, kind of infuse the vlogs with content that a lot of my audience would still be interested in. So there will be, you know, certain things like maybe like what I'm cooking that day or like decorating my Christmas tree, things like that. But I also want to kind of include some makeup or beauty related stuff in there just so that people will actually click on them and watch them. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just kind of the way YouTube works. I gotta, gotta be kind of sneaky about it so that people will actually watch. So if you have any ideas for things you'd like to see in vlogs, whether it's, you know, it can be non-beauty related, but especially if you have any beauty or makeup type things that you think would fit well into vlogs, maybe like, you know, cleaning up my vanity or things like that that are sort of vlog appropriate, but that also kind of fit in with my channel. So I hope that's making sense. Maybe I'll put little quick little like get ready with me's into the vlogs and things like that. Um, but really it's meant to be fun. I'm trying, I'm not trying to stress out too much about it because I think it's just going to be fun and something a little different for my channel. So I just used, this is kind of an appropriate question because I just used my Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation, which I love so much. I wish I didn't love it as much as I do. Your updated stance on Physicians Formula, Wet n Wild, First Aid Beauty, etc. I haven't purchased from Wet n Wild, but I did buy First Aid Beauty in the 21 Days of Beauty. But I'd love more input if you have any or if you're also confused, lol. <laughs> so yeah, a couple months ago I did a video about just kind of some of my thoughts on <laughs> the cruelty-free label being a little bit more complicated than I think I wanted it to be and what a lot of people wanted it to be because there was a blog post from My Beauty Bunny explaining why she was putting Wet n Wild Physicians Formula and First Aid Beauty back on her cruelty-free list. Um, a lot of people stopped considering those brands cruelty-free when they started selling in mainland China. I'm not going to go into all of the details because I talked about it in great depth in that other video, so I'll link that video below if you are completely lost and confused. But, well, for a while a lot of people uh, thought of those brands as like very clearly not cruelty-free, 
viewing it as a very kind of black and white issue. My Beauty Bunny kind of made it clear that it's maybe not as black and white as we thought it was. I've been meaning to kind of give some updated thoughts on this topic for a while. I don't think I 100% agree with My Beauty Bunny. Um, I think a lot of the information that she shared in her blog post was coming from the brands themselves, as well as PETA, which is an organization that I just really don't trust. To be honest, I, I still don't really know how to feel about these brands, but kind of with the information that I've gotten, uh, both from reading my Beauty Bunny's post, which, like I said, I did kind of take with a grain of salt, I kind of still just view those brands as kind of gray area brands. I've heard conflicting information from sources that I do kind of trust more than PETA. I've talked a little bit with Tashina from Logical Harmony and there are some other organizations that I personally do trust more. Um, Humane Society International and Cruelty Free International that say post-market animal testing very much does still happen in China and that that type of post-market testing doesn't happen in other countries the same way that it does in China. Yes, I'm still confused like many people are and I personally am not purchasing from them because I'd rather, I'd rather purchase from brands that I'm sure about, but I also, honestly, I don't know, if I didn't have a channel, I might feel differently. I would say just do what you feel comfortable with. I feel like there are arguments on both sides, and if you, if those are, you know, some of the only brands that you can access, or, you know, you do feel comfortable with purchasing from them, maybe you are comfortable with that PETA certification, um, you know, go ahead and purchase from them. I don't think there's really a right or wrong answer necessarily. It's all very confusing. So really, we all just have to do the best we can. And I don't really feel like Wet n Wild, the Musicians Formula, and those brands, I don't feel like they're the problem. You know, I don't think we need to be fixating so much on that, on whether or not they're cruelty-free. I just feel like there are other issues we can be focusing on that are more... I don't know, maybe a little more consequential. <laughs> you guys, my pinky toenail is coming off. I, um, I've stubbed that toe so many times recently and the toenail is coming off and I don't want to rip it off, but it's like hanging on and <sighs> I don't know what to do. But also kind of like to generally update you on some of the things I talked about in that video that were more of like just my feelings about the cruelty-free community and the term cruelty-free and everything. In that video, I was kind of talking about, like, do I even really need to use the label cruelty-free anymore? Like, I kind of feel like there's just so many other issues and cruelty-free is kind of a misleading term because it doesn't mean that a product is completely free from cruelty. It really just means the product is free from animal cruelty. And there's just so, it's so muddy and there's so much going on that, like, why are we so fixated on animal cruelty free when there's so many other issues and I was like, I don't know, maybe I just need to drop the label altogether. <sighs> yeah, it was a bit of an identity crisis that I was having, but I, I've decided to continue using the term cruelty free because it's a term that a lot of people know and understand and I think it's generally understood what it means. It doesn't mean I I still don't love the term. I kind of prefer to say not tested on animals or animal cruelty free or something like that just because I think it's a little bit more accurate. Um, but I haven't I haven't decided to drop the cruelty free label altogether. It's more so that I just want my channel to focus a little bit more on just general mindful consumerism and not so much on just cruelty free. Obviously I still want to make sure that all the brands that I use and promote are free from animal testing because that's an issue that I care about. Yeah, I hope that that was a, enough of an update. I don't know. I feel like I could keep going on and on and on, but I'm not. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close it there. So a lot of people are asking about fostering. So I did share on my Insta stories yesterday that I just signed up to start fostering cats with my local humane society and I'm so excited. I have my orientation this week, later this week, and I can't wait. Um, I have to say I'm nervous. I've always wanted 
to foster. You know, since Elaine passed away, um, it's something that, that I've been thinking about doing just because we do have this space now. I'm still definitely very emotionally <laughs> wounded, I guess, from losing her. If you're new, um, my four-month-old kitten named Elaine actually um, passed away in the beginning of September. Um, it was just completely devastating. It was a total shock and um, it just happened very suddenly. And ever since then, you know, I'm still just grieving so much. Um, it's been, I guess, a month and a half now. And yeah, it's been hard. I've been, like, I've been able to actually get on camera and film and enjoy it. Um, but then there's also these just like huge waves of sadness that kind of <laughs> wash over me. And like when I'm filming, those are the kind of moments in between the waves of grief, I guess. Yeah, it's gotten a little easier to function, but oh, it's just been, it's been so hard. Like every single day, I just wish, I just wish she was here, you know? Not to like bring the mood down. Ever since then, you know, I've kind of thought, you know, in the future, I think, you know, I do want to start fostering and uh, I decided to just kind of go for it and put in my application yesterday. I don't feel ready necessarily, but I also don't think I'm ever going to feel ready. But you know, there are animals that need help and I feel like while I have the space um, and the time and everything, I should, you know, use that to help in whatever way I can and I think that's what Elaine would have wanted and I've always thought about fostering and I've always been kind of like oh it, it would be so hard to you know because you get attached to the animals and then you know you have to send them off to their new home and I just like can't even imagine how like sad that must feel but at the same time um I just I know it must be so rewarding and I'm really excited and also you know if absolutely necessary I would be open to what they call a foster fail, which is where you uh, end up adopting the animal after all. It's an option. Certainly not my uh, intention going into it, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Um, I, yeah, I signed up to foster cats and from my understanding it could be adult cats or kittens. I think that Heidi and Tala are gonna be really great foster siblings is that what you'd call them they're very friendly and they love like playing and interacting with other cats so i think it'll be a good way for foster the foster cats to get some kind of socialization and experience with other cats so yeah i'm really excited i definitely will share more whenever things start happening one person asked self-care slash keeping yourself happy or positive amid such a bad year <sighs> Um, I wish I had like really great tips for this. Honestly, I think just kind of accepting things for what they are is my only kind of advice for going through rough times because sometimes you just can't stay positive. I guess just kind of sitting with the awful feelings is sometimes all you can do and just remembering that whatever rough things you're going through will eventually um, pass and they'll eventually maybe not get better, but you'll learn to live with them more easily. And just remembering that you're human, like you need, you need to rest, you need to give yourself time to recharge and, you know, just sit on the couch and watch Netflix or whatever, YouTube play Animal Crossing, do whatever makes you happy, and just, yeah, just remembering that rest is productive too. You don't have to always be checking things off your to-do list necessarily to be living a full life. And also another tip or another thing that I've kind of had to learn is like some days you're just not going to be on your A-game. Like I've had some filming days where I'm trying to film, like I want to film a video like normal and I just cannot get into it like normal and 
you have to remind yourself that it's not going to be like that forever. You're going to have days where you're just not feeling inspired or you just don't really have the energy to do your work like you normally do. And that's okay because you will get that inspiration back. You may just need to give your brain a little bit of a rest. Um, and that's very hard for me to accept sometimes because I'm like, no, like I said I was going to film today. I want to film. But... And, you know, I just feel so horrible not following through with what I told myself I was going to do. But kind of learning to be okay with that and just say, you know what, like today is just not my day. I'm going to give myself permission to rest and, you know, do things that I know like recharge my brain and things that make me happy tomorrow. Hopefully I'll be feeling better and more inspired or maybe the next day like but I guarantee you like I've had some of those days recently and I don't know why I can't just be understanding with myself like obviously I'm not going to be feeling 100% with everything that's gone on this year. It's been hard for me to just be like let's just rest today. <laughs> Every single time I do that the next day or later that week I feel back to my usual self. So nothing is permanent. If you feel like garbage one day, that doesn't mean you're gonna feel that way forever. Um, and if you push yourself and punish yourself, then that feeling is probably gonna continue for longer than it would if you would just let yourself rest and let yourself kind of veg out and relax. Those are things that have been hard lessons for me to learn because I thrive off of checking things off my to-do list and I think that that can be good, but it can also be really, it can get to a really toxic level if you don't kind of keep yourself in check and treat yourself like a human being. <laughs> well, what is this video? To be honest, I was having one of those moments just now where I was like, I don't know if this video is even going very well, like I might want to refilm this later when I, I don't know, I don't feel like I have a lot of energy today and I wish I had more energy sometimes. But sometimes when I feel like a video isn't going well, I watch it back and I'm like, oh, this was fine. I don't know why I was, why I felt like this wasn't going well. Um, so hopefully that's the case here. What's your favorite form of exercise? Gym, floor or classes, running, yoga, etc. cetera. Whew. Um, and then another question. <laughs> was, do you work out regularly these days? I'm finding it harder to find the motivation. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> I have not been working out regularly these days. And honestly, how is anyone working out regularly right now? So pre-pandemic, my favorite form of exercise was going to like gym classes. They'd have different things like Pilates, yoga, weightlifting classes, all kinds of things like that. I really enjoyed those. That was my like preferred way of working out because it was like, it's easy for me to just go show up and somebody else tells me what to do and then it's over and I leave. <laughs> I don't have to think about it. I'm not one of those people that can just like go to a gym and like work out on the fly. Like I don't, I don't know how to set up like my own gym regimen. I enjoy certain things. Like I enjoy lifting weights. I enjoy yoga. I, I just don't know how to do that by myself. I need somebody else to give me a routine. So that was how I was working out. I was really good at sticking to that for like three years until the pandemic hit and my gym has reopened. It reopened in like May. <laughs> Um, I ended up canceling my membership because I just don't really feel safe going to a gym. I feel like it's a, that's a little too high risk for what I'm comfortable with. Um, obviously people don't wear masks at the gym. I'm guessing like I don't, I wouldn't want to wear a mask while working out. I'd rather just do at home workouts or go outside. I tell myself I'm going to do home workouts. Um, I was pretty good at doing those at the start of the pandemic as well. I would do YouTube videos. There's uh, Mad Fit is a really good channel. Yeah, I was really good about that. And then over the last like month and a half, I just have not been feeling it. Um, I do. I try to go for walks. And my mom actually just recently got her yoga teacher training certificate or certification. And so she's been teaching like Zoom yoga classes for like me and my sister and my aunt. So we do that every Sunday. Actually, she's going to be teaching one in about an hour. So once I finish 
filming this, I'm gonna do that. So I do yoga once a week. <laughs> that's one thing that's pretty much set in stone every week. And the other days I might go for a walk. <laughs> That is pretty much the extent of my exercise routine right now. So it's not ideal, but I'm I'm reminding myself that, you know, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So, you know, you can't expect yourself to be like at your normal level of productivity in every single aspect of your life. But I do I do want to start reintroducing like YouTube workouts and things like that. Um, and now that the weather is also cooling down outside, I will, I think I might start trying to run again as well. In the spring, before it got really hot, I was running here and there, and it was alright. I don't love running, but it's one of those things that you can just easily do. You don't need to have any sort of equipment or anything other than, like, good shoes. So, it's just where I live. It's impossible to run outside in the summer unless you get up at like 6 a.m., which I'm not going to do. So, yeah, it's not it's not even safe to run outside here um, it, when it's like super humid and hot. Nah. So I'm using the Billy Beauty palette and I am kind of just doing one of my favorite ways to use this palette, which is a very like blue look blue on the lid and then just using some of the warm browns and oranges in the crease. Um, one person asked, do you always wear a mask in public? Yes, definitely. Would you ever get a dog if given the chance to? I would. I am much more of a cat person. I just love cats so much. And I like dogs too. I just don't necessarily feel like I am a dog person most of the time. I could see myself maybe getting like a small chill dog. Big dogs that are very high energy are just not really for me. Um, I appreciate them from afar, but I just think with my personality and my lifestyle, more mellow animals are kind of my vibe. So I love cats, but I also, you know, small, small dogs I love and I, I could see myself maybe getting a small dog one day. And I think it would be nice to have a dog to kind of like Forced me to maybe be a little bit more active and go outside more. <laughs> that might be good for me, but um, probably not anytime soon. Just um, we already have two cats and we're about to start fostering cats and we're going to have a full house again soon, most likely. So um, maybe one day when I have more space and like a yard, that would be doable. But for now, um, probably not. Let's see, what's your star sign and do you believe in all that stuff? Um, my sun sign is Sagittarius. My moon is Scorpio and my rising is Pisces. I think that's right. Do I believe in that stuff? I'm not really sure if I do or don't. Maybe. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I think it's fun. I But I also kind of take it with a grain of salt, you know? Sort of low-key trying to pan this lip liner from e.l.f. This is the shade Dusty Rose. That is all I have left and I, I'm kind of just trying to finish it up before the end of this year, even though it's not in my project pan. I may throw it into my project pan, though, in my next update. I didn't even realize I was that close to finishing it until recently, and I was like, oh wow, like I could probably finish this by the end of the year. By the way, I didn't mention this while I was doing it, but for my like bronzer, I used this e.l.f. matte eyeshadow in soft beige that is that I recently rolled into my project pan as a bronzer. That is the main way that I've been using it lately, not even as an eyeshadow base. Just because um, I actually really like it as a cream bronzer and that's the way the, that I've been getting most of my use out of it. And I also just remembered I forgot to apply blush, so I'm going to do that now. But I actually really like this as a bronzer. It's a nice tone. It's um, still pretty light, which is my kind of preferred uh, shade of bronzer. Is something that's only like a little bit deeper than my skin tone. I feel like it just works so much better, blends in so much better and it looks so much more natural on me. And it's a good kind of slightly warm shade, but it's not too yellow toned. And yeah, I've been really liking it that way. So there's the finished look. Um, to kind of recap the eyeshadows, I used, um, I did use the transition shade from Walking on Eggshells just to kind of blend everything together. But every other shadow I used was from the Eyes of India palette. I used Bengal as a kind of warm crease shade. I used Mile all over the lid, beautiful shade. I love that color in this palette. I used the brown and this sort of rusty red color in my outer corner. Uh, the brown again as my lower liner. 
and Taj Mahal, that kind of pearly white shade in my inner corner. And that is the look. That is one of my favorite ways to use this palette. It's one of my kind of go-to looks with it. Very um, kind of bold, but I really, really love that blue shade. I've been having so much fun with this palette this month. It is a beautiful fall palette. I love those jewel tones and the warm shades. They're just perfect for fall. So I think that's it for this get ready with me. I hope you enjoyed it. I feel like it was kind of all over the place, but that's usually how these videos go. If you enjoyed it, definitely make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you again very soon, and hopefully I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.